Hi guys, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about my October wrap up. So in this video what I usually do is I talk about the books that I read th uh, through the month. Uh, I talk about the books that I'm currently reading and then I talk about the movies and series that I watch throughout the month. So beginning with the books that I read, I have videos for all of them. I'm going to link them in the description. So if you are curious with any of them that I'm going to mention, please go check it out. Um, so last month, October, was what I called my horror month. Uh, and this month consisted of me uploading videos every Wednesday and Sunday of or short stories or books about the, the genre of horror. Horror, mystery, death, gothic, so everything related to Halloween, to this ambience and this genre, this type of genre, I also thrillers, although I didn't read any of those. Um, I gathered them, I chose, um, and I uploaded the video every Wednesday and every Sunday. In exception of the last weekend of October, uh, so 30 30 of October that I didn't upload because I wasn't I didn't have internet in my house so that was an unfortunate um, and also I begin this year already I begin a tradition what I wanted to be a tradition of uploading 31 uh, 31st I mean, of October, so the day of Halloween, a special video, so it doesn't have to be on a Wednesday or on a Sunday, right? It's whenever it is the 31st. And I want to choose books that talk about books or talk about the genre or talk about the authors or the inspiration of authors or the... A biography of a, an author that writes about the genre so everything related to um, the genre in itself I uploaded also a video on that day or not that day was supposed to be on that day because I didn't as I've said I didn't have internet in my house and also uh, I took a bit longer to finish that book but okay beginning with the first uh, short story that I uploaded. So, I read The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. This was a short story that I loved. I think it was so unexpected, I would say. I heard a lot of things about Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, but I never have read any anything by him and I was surprised. It was um, a really short story, so a really few pages, but with such a punch, it was incredible. Like, it was macabre, it was creepy. N creepy, yeah, in a way, it's, but it was so... You know, it's so tragic, but you go, you read, you read it full, and you arrive at the end, and it's so satisfying, the ending, I mean. And yeah, I loved it. Well, then I read Carmilla by Sheridan Lufanu. This is a short book. So it's like 100 pages or so. Uh, and this book is about a vampire. 
and this book is uh, was published earlier I think about 10 years earlier 10 to 20 now I don't remember earlier than Dracula by Bram Stoker that I read as well not this year I mean but I already have read Dracula and I was curious about Carmilla because I heard a lot of things like it was an inspiration to Dr Dracula um, that it was the beginning of the vampire mythology that was through this book that uh, came the inspiration to many other books that come, came after the, this one so I was really curious and I liked it but it wasn't aus outstanding you know like is a story that you read and it is entertaining but you know it's predictable so you know that what's going to happen going to happen I was hoping that this book has more plot to it a little bit more not anything substantial but something something like that I can't even describe but you know it was perhaps too short I, I don't know if that was it but you know was really entertaining I really for the first or one of the first at least books about vampires I think that it was really interesting so for i i'm thinking about the people that read read this at the time so it must be really intriguing to what 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 is a vampire i mean what monster is this so it maybe it was really interesting at the time but right now with so much known about vampires and everything surrounding them um, it is a good story but don't go for it like hoping to be something extraordinary you know so that's it then I read another short story I read The Orla by Guy de Montpassant so The Orla was a short story that I really 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 enjoyed because this short story is written in, like entries in a diary so our protagonist is oh we are reading our protagonist's right, uh, diary uh, and he begins with a fever and nightmares and he ends up like in madness so it's a voyage of a few months I think it's like nine months or so and it's it's something I mean he goes through hell um, because he doesn't know exactly what is happening to him and and he's trying to um, fight this being that is there with him but he doesn't see him and he ends up committing a crime and it's like because he was so distracted and so obsessed with what was going on that he didn't even remember to think in other people he was only thinking on him in himself and so you know that's a vortex that he went on and he simply forgot so I of course I'm not going to say exactly what happened because you have to read it to know but trust me you will love it then I read The Turn of the Screw by Henry James so this one I didn't like it so much so this is a short book also like 100 100 and something pages and it was a bit boring for me 
because I thought that this has a lot of fillers although it is so short but uh, even though it is short um, I thought that the book have you know dragged it has it dragged a lot and I wanted to know what was going to happen next and he would describe scenes and deviate from the main plot and I, I don't like that I really don't like that when I see that is is going nowhere and it's not going to add anything to the story with that, those descriptions or um, um, mentioning uh, secondary characters I don't like that and I didn't enjoy this one so much so there you go then I read another short story called The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde I loved this short story so funny so I know this was the month of Halloween and I know this, uh, this was the horror month but I mean comedy is part of everything and I think it's so important for us to laugh no matter what so and I never well I'm lying I was going to say that I never have read nothing from Oscar Wilde or anything from Oscar Wilde but I did I read the picture of Dorian Gray and I really loved it that was the only book that I read from the author but well I read this short story and it's oh my <laughs> it's so funny the way that he so he changes the way that we look at hunted houses and what it means to be hunted because the people that were, lo were looking for a hunted house so normally people run from them but this family was looking for one so he changes our perspective about the word hunted and how if perhaps the word hunted or the meaning hunted is only in our heads and as everything right and I think that he does a brilliant job to deconstruct this idea and these fears and yeah these fears that w some some people feel about certain things um, and he, he, he constructs a beautiful story with comedy in it that warms your heart and I really advise you to go and read it you will have a wonderful time and it's also short so you don't going to pass a lot of time reading it so and it's really 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 funny go read it then I read The Great God Pan by Arthur Macon so this one I have mixed feelings mm, I think I liked it I mean I thought it was interesting but it's a, a more like of a weird story because I think this is considered a classic of horror um, or at least a book that is admired by many and considered an inspiration for so many and this is a type of story that you have to read between the lines and if you miss a detail, you perhaps miss the point of what is going to happen a few pages later. So you really have to pay attention with this one. The point is in the details. So pay uh, close attention to it. Then I read another short story called 
The Temple by H.P. Lovecraft. So this was my first... Um, oh, I don't have the book with me. I read it in, in a compilation of short stories. It's right there. <laughs> Let me grab it. So here it is. This is a compilation of short stories by H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, and then this is volume 2 because I bought this in second hand and this was the only one I think if I'm not mistaken that was available so I bought it because I was having trouble reading it in English I think that the type of language and complexity that H.P. Lovecraft uh, uses is too high for me so i was having trouble so i had to bought a, uh, edi a portuguese edition so i could read it in portuguese so i could understand it better so this one was really interesting i also really enjoyed this is a voyage to the unknown to new new, new worlds and the human curiosity, how even in the face of death, we choose curiosity. So it was really interesting. I think you will, will enjoy reading it. And this was my first incursion in Lovecraft. And I'm considering uh, read more from this author. I heard and I saw many people talking about him so I want to read more from him as well then I read the Phantom of the Opera this was my uh, October book from the challenge 12 books for 12 months um, and I really enjoyed this one this is considered a gothic book so it was a good surprise to um, see how different this story is from the movie that I saw a few years ago I think 2007 I think the movie I saw was from 2007 yeah the story was really different and the ending how they end the story is so different from what is in the book so is a romance is development of characters so it has many gothic elements to it architectural the game between light and dark so many things and a love triangle and how in my opinion the girl was between two options that weren't the best for her but you know that's only my opinion <laughs> and yeah i really enjoyed it then i read the dance macabre so this was my special for the 31st and this is a book about the horror genre by Stephen King. Um, and I, I, well, I can say that I loved it. I liked it. Why? Because this book was written better, was published in 1981. And so this book is about 30, the 30 years prior to 1980 this book talks about books talks about movies radio shows tv shows that are about the horror genre and so many references included in here i didn't know about i didn't know anything about so it was really difficult for me to oh i know what you mean or oh I know what you're talking about because I didn't and I heard some things uh, through other books or other youtubers 
that they talk about it so I knew some of the references that he does in here but most of them and I'm talking about movies radio shows and uh, TV shows because books I have read some of the books that he mentions in, in, in here so it was in that way it was really interesting because he made some comments about some of those old, of these books that um, through my reading I didn't have come to that so reading this I and I annotated them, I annotated them because he made he makes a lot of comments about Dracula, Frankenstein, the turn of the screw, um, more Dracula, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So he makes he make comments he makes comments um, about the, the books that I mentioned, and he oh he talks openly about them. So if you haven't read them, please go do so before you pick this one up. I mentioned this in the video that I made for this uh, book because I think that I lost some things because I didn't have read the books that he was mentioning. So I think that is really important. But beyond books, so TV shows, films and radio shows, I didn't know anything that he was talking about. So in some parts it was a bit boring because I didn't know the people that he was talking about or I never saw any episodes of a TV show that he was mentioning. I just knew that those shows existed because I heard somewhere but beyond that I had no clue of what he was talking about but even even so I think this is a really good reading for you to do because principally because of the books that he mentioned I think you gain a lot about the comments that he does about the books I'm going to give the example of Dracula. So I read Dracula by Bram Stoker and Stephen King mentions he, this book in here and he does some comments about some parts of the book that were implying something else and for me I read those parts and I didn't came with the same idea. So it passes, it passed through me and I didn't catch the clue. So just for that, I think this book was worth it. So please go read the books that I mentioned to you in here and then pick Dance Macabre. I think you will enjoy it very much. And yeah, that was it. So if you are interested in any of the books that I mentioned or in any of the short stories that I mentioned, please go check the videos that I have linked in the description. I think you will love it too. Uh, and let's go on. So, the books that I'm currently reading. I'm still finishing the Budenbrooks. No, Budenbrook by Thomas Mann, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm not going to extend a lot about this one because I already mentioned it in other videos and you know my feelings about this book, so I'm not going to elongate. I'm just going to say that I'm loving it. I'm still reading it, so you, you will have to wait to see the video about this book. And then I'm reading what I talk about when I talk about running by Aruki Murakami. This is a memoir in a way from Murakami. He, he talks about his journey of running and I'm still at the beginning as you can see but I, I'm enjoying it. He has a re, uh, easy writing is really fluid, really accessible 
and with not complicated words or complicated phrases um, well not complicated words not so much because I have to research about a meaning of a word in here for now so let's see how that goes but you know that's good for us to um, develop our vocabulary right and increase our um, knowledge of vocab so that's always good and yeah I'm really liking it I'm uh, this is my July book for the 12 books of 12 months if I'm not mistaken so I'm late in that so I'm still reading July as you can see so later I will do a video about this book as well then about movies so I saw the black phone this is um, a movie inspired in a book from Joe Hill son of Stephen King with the same name the black phone this is with Ethan Hawke he plays the villain in the, the movie and this is surrounding um, 1970, 1970 or so when the, the time where the movie passes and so we accompany a boy uh, through his daily life so he plays baseball he goes to school and he's bullied a lot and some mysterious disappearance of young boys are happening in the neighborhood and some friends of the, our main uh, boy um, are disappearing and one day oh and this boy has a sister and we get to know her that she has dreams where she in a way predicts some things that are going to happen uh, uh, the police wanted to talk to her because she predicted well she predicted that in a crime scene was going to be black balloons in one of the disappearances the police found black balloons so they wanted to talk to her to see in what way was the involvement but so our boy one day uh, goes on, on the street and a man lets go of a package that he had in his hand and he breaks some eggs and such and he says to him that he is a, mag a magician and he asks that the our boy wants to see a magic trick and he says yes and our boy peeks through the van of this man and he sees black balloons and he asks the, are these black balloons and the man opens his van takes the balloons out and grabs our boy and gets him into the van so you know then we have him in a basement with a mattress only a mattress and in the corner a bathroom with a toilet and then he stays there and the man goes to see him with a mask on his face so we can see his face and then we have there a phone uh, old old not old old for us now but at the time it was a normal phone that is a wall phone uh, and our boy tries to um, I don't remember the name of the boy I'm sorry Finny yeah Finny uh, Finny tries to see if the phone works but the but the cord of the phone is um, broken so no hope there 
but uh, hours go by and he starts to hear the phone ringing and he doesn't understand why and he goes to pick it up and a voice starts to talk to him and then we understand that the voices that he hears are voices of other boys that were there so other boys that were kidnapped by this man and these boys try to help Finney to get away from this basement and so we have a development after this where Finney tries everything to get out of the basement um, and we have his sister, the one that had dreams, trying to help the case as well because she tries to dream where her brother is but she doesn't have so much luck in that but she gets some clues that will be really helpful for the police and so i'm not going to say anything more i think that if i say more i'm going to spoil the movie so i'm going to stay here but please go watch it is a really fun fun well entertaining you know uh, because you are on the edge of your seat to want to know what is going to happen it has a little scares here and there but nothing major so if you are a bit sens sensitive about those stuff you won't be jumping from your seat or anything so be cool with it and yeah go watch it then i saw the world the werewolf by marvel this is how it's how is it called no, the movie is called The Werewolf by Night. So this is from Marvel and this is with Laura Donnelly and Gael Garcia Bernal and Harriet Sampson. Sampson. And so this is a story about so hunters that hunt monsters and we have the, um, the president of those hunters dying and this president has a powers stone or a stone with powers longevity um, vitality uh, and so on so the movie is all in black and white except for the stone that is red and we have these hunters being invited to the funeral of their president this president has a daughter but this daughter is estranged from the father because she was the natural success succeeder succeeder i think it is from her father but as she was estranged she lost her right and these hunters will be on a challenge where they will hunt a monster that has the stone the first to get to the stone will be the new president of the hunters and will have the stone with powers and so our main character is the character of Gael Garcia Bernal I'm not going to say anything more I don't think that I should because this is a short movie um, so it's like 40 minutes or something so it will end really fast you won't be dwelling on the movie um, so I think if I say more I'm going to spoil the thing so I don't want to I think the information that I gave you is enough I just only want to say that it was a really interesting twist to the story of a werewolf in a way not so much different but I think the 
the plot that, that they uh, give gave this story was well found a and I really loved the ha the actors that were involved uh, because they they take from you the feelings that is hoped for so was really well done and the fact that this was in black and white gave the ambience to the movie so I liked that as well the only part where it's in color is at the end of the movie so it was fun to find out the colors or the colors of the clothes that they were in really funny so go watch it then i saw the woman in the window this is a movie from 21 and i didn't like it i'm sorry but i know this is inspired in a book uh, but i heard mixed thoughts about the book as well some people loved it other people thought it was pointless and I have to say that about the movie I thought it as well. I didn't understand the point of the movie. I thought it was stupid to say the least. And I didn't like the ending. I thought it was well, something I have to give is that I enjoy the parts that were psychological and I didn't guess who was the killer because there is a murder in this story but still just because of that ending I thought it was so stupid I don't know how else to describe it I didn't like it and well I wouldn't say go watch this movie because yeah well and then about the series so these three movies or were the only ones that I saw and about the series I only watched one and that was the house of the dragon I have to say that I really enjoyed uh, I thought that this uh, season was a bit rushed so maybe they could have divided this at least in two seasons uh, because the we had jumps of time of years between episodes and or months years or months so in some parts you just find out what happens through context of each episode not because someone says anything about it or is explained to you because it isn't you catch that through what's happening um, so I liked it in a way because you don't dwell on the story the story is not dragged so it's really Pace to pace to pace but maybe they could extend it a bit so the story could be more um, intricate but that was a choice I respect that and I enjoyed it even though that so um, the way that it ended I was a bit sad because the character one of the characters I, I like I think he's a bit well he's not innocent but I think he committed something that he didn't it wasn't his intention he, he just wanted to provoke and something led to another and he ended up doing something that I suppose that he's regretful and I like that, that character and I didn't like what he did the season ended a bit 
ah uh, you know but you know i suppose that's the point so well well done right but yeah i really enjoyed it i think if you are a fan of game of thrones you will enjoy very much game um, the house of the dragon uh, and yeah i i think that that's that's it so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on instagram i'll be posting there whenever i have a book review to do or anything else and yeah i hope you have enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye